Wild and the Coyotes in St. Paul tonight. Our XL Energy Spotlight focuses on offense from the defenseman. Well, and the Phoenix Coyotes are surprisingly one of the top teams of scoring in the league, and it's because they're getting offense from their blue line. They have guys that aren't afraid to put the puck on net. The, uh, guys like Yandel who move the puck very well, Ekman Larson who gets the pucks on net, and Stone who also puts some good shots on net. The Wild need to continue to add that to their game, and with Ballard back in the lineup tonight, maybe they'll get some more of that. First of three meetings between the Wild and the Coyotes. Face off next. Energy Star certified compact fluorescent bulbs save the most energy when you put them in the lights you use the most. A variety are on sale now starting at just a dollar each. Find out where to buy them at responsiblebynature.com. Black Friday's coming. That time of year, chaos, pandemonium, holiday madness. How will you survive? No need to panic. Let Ford be your survival guide. Got a fresh new lineup of cars, trucks, SUVs, all very efficient. And people are excited. They just found out about the Ford Black Friday Award prepaid MasterCard. It's worth a lot. Now get 0 for 60 plus 1500 retail trade assist or up to 8500 total savings on F-150. Only at your local Northland Ford dealer. The Minnesota Wild have plenty to be thankful for on the eve of Thanksgiving. Starting with a cornucopia of talent that's been putting forth a consistent effort every night. A pair of dynamic goalies who have been feasting on plenty of pucks. And most importantly, a home crowd that has helped Minnesota to the best home start in franchise history. Tonight, the Wild look to give back to the state of hockey with a home win against the Coyotes. And tonight, the Wild look to continue their dominance on home ice, where they are 10-1-2 this season, looking for their seventh consecutive win in front of the home fans, our Northland Ford starting goaltenders. Well, it's Thomas Bryce. Uh, normally, you see Mike Smith in there. Mike Smith, one of the busiest goaltenders in the National Hockey League. That's why he gets the night off, so Bryce gets in there, has played well when he stepped in, but has not had a lot of minutes. Nicholas Backstrom, in the same light, has not played a lot this year, but of course, we know how much he's played in his career, and we know what he can do. Concentration for him will be on rebounds. Early on, we'll take a look and see how he's doing in that department. Dave Tippett, head coach of the Phoenix Coyotes, told me this morning, uh, obviously the defensive side of the game is a big part of what they do. They want to get back to that. And Mike Yo has some new players filtering back into the lineup. We're underway in St. Paul. Wild and the Coyotes, a quick two-game homestand for Minnesota. It will include Colorado on Friday night. Marco Scandella starts out for the Wild across to Spurgeon. And back to Scandella. Finds Matt Cook just inside the Phoenix line. Scandella's in, tried to center. And it's intercepted and cleared. You hate to give up a shot in that circumstance, and in that situation, you almost want to see the player shoot one off the goaltender at, at the very least. Scandella here pokes it by Morris and into the Phoenix zone. Eric Morris back to pick it up for the Coyotes. Bodker ahead at center. Vermette into the Minnesota zone, looking for a return pass. Suter pokes it away along the end wall. And Koivu. Pokes it up the near side. Charlie Coyle deflects it out to center. Danny Heatley playing on this top line tonight along with Koivu and Coyle. Morris in his own zone for the Coyotes. At the Minnesota line, Suter got a piece of it. Now Baxter will be forced to play it. Around looking for Coyle. Held at the point by Yandel, a shot! And on the rebound, Clint Hammer has a good look at Nicholas Backstrom, but he makes the stop. Well, we just talked about defense and the offense from the blue line that the Phoenix Coyotes are getting, and this is a perfect example and a good save by Backstrom here. Look at this shot, right on net. It bounces through, is deflected. Clint Hammer had a good chance to get that a couple of times. But uh, it was back to lock that down. Have to be very conscious of this Phoenix team who uh, also has one of the higher shooting totals from blue liners in the National Hockey League. And it, it follows that 
That's why their Blue Liners are second in scoring in the National Hockey League. Backstrom covers. And we'll get another faceoff in the Minnesota zone. Backstrom, who has had great success at home throughout his career, his goals against about a quarter of a goal lower, 113 wins, 59 regulation losses here this year. He's making just his fifth start of the season on home ice. Rice to play it. Slides it across to Yandel. Oh, boy. And then was that Granlin that just ran into one of the defensemen for Phoenix? And he goes. And he's limping toward slowly. the bench right now. Slowly. That's the first contact he's made in this game. And, of course, Granlin's been out for a couple with an upper body injury. And Granlin takes a seat gingerly on the Minnesota bench. Looks like he may have caught something up high. Watch as he comes in and just, yeah, he just gets a shoulder. Well, that's a, just a solid hit by uh, Connor Murphy. And good example as he heads off here, and hopefully that's just to shake out the cobwebs. Uh, but Mikhail Granlin, remember the hit he took by Kadri, and then you remember the hit in Ottawa where he took a very good hip check. I think it was Mathot that put that one on him. The point is, is as a young player, you have to learn how to avoid things like that. And even though you want to be an aggressive player, there are times where you have to be careful. And he also takes another hit here in this one. Into the circle, a chance for Halpern, but he was tied up. Halpern has it back. Plays it in behind the Minnesota goal. Chip Chura there. Chip Chura trying to work free. Brown setting up out front. Feeds the point instead. Stone whips it across. Ekman Larson shot goes off the end glass. Chip Chura to Halpern. And now Ekman Larson. His shot was deflected, but Chip Chura recovers. Scandella trying to poke it out of the zone for Minnesota. Kanafka and Mitchell also digging for the puck. And it hops by Ekman Larson and comes out to center ice. Michael Stone. Four goals in his last five games. He's not considered the most offensive defenseman on this Phoenix club. They have two of the top eight scoring defensemen in the National Hockey League in Keith Yandel and Oliver ekman Larson. Yeah, Stone is a, is a pleasant surprise, of course, yeah, but that's what you want in your lineup. You want guys pitching in that you may not have expected to pitch in in certain areas. Cook absorbs a hit along the end wall. And Rubata plays it ahead at center. Hansel throws a check, and that allows Phoenix to get the puck in deep. Cook able to get it past Morris. It's back in for just a moment. Then Fontaine to Cook softly dumps it into the corner. Morris is there. Wodziak and Cook try to establish a physical play for Minnesota. Plankhammer races into the wild zone. Keith Ballard is back in the lineup for the wild tonight. Ballard has missed the last nine and 16 of the last 19. Back in time to play against his former team, the Phoenix Coyotes. Mike Yo must have thought it was Christmas come early. He had Ballard come back on the ice. Granlin and Mitchell come back. Harding was back out there. And, of course, the big surprise was Parisi was skating. He must have shaken his head and said, where did all these guys come from? Ballard dumps it in. Koivu playing with Pominville and Niederreiter on this shift. Pominville to Koivu. Niederreiter's loose. And Bryce got a glove on it. Oh, he tried to toe drag that around the goaltender. And if he had tried to shoot it, he would have had nothing but goal pad to hit it into. Almost got it around the goaltender. Long shot by Niederreiter, held by Bryce. A good chance for Minnesota, four and a half minutes in. And if anyone can make this move, it's him. He's got very good hands for a big guy, especially. Watch how he tries to tow it around. And actually, that was the defenseman who helped break that up. If it weren't for, uh, actually, maybe it was Botker stepping down there, uh, just catching the top of the stick. Otherwise, Niederreiter would have made a pretty solid move, I think, around Bryce. Whether he scored or not is hard to say, but just a good... Uh, defensive play there in front of the net by the Coyotes. Draw controlled by Phoenix. Shooter able to hold for Minnesota. Coyotes come out with Ekman Larson, but he spins back into his own zone. Across the stone and now back to Ekman Larson. And they're offside at the Minnesota line. Now on Fox Sports North Plus, the Minnesota Timberwolves are hosting the Denver Nuggets. 
Here's a list of where you can find Fox Sports North Plus for a complete listing. Go to foxsportsnorth.com. So we said there wasn't going to be a static lineup when we showed you the lines. Now it definitely won't be if Granlund isn't back out there. Trying to count guys on the bench. There's 12 guys on the bench. Five on the ice, so the Wild is missing one guy, and that one guy, I think, remains Granlin. So we'll see some lines uh, shifting around for sure now. Bryce plays it around. It's tipped out to the line by Moss and comes back into the Minnesota zone. Ryan Suter starts out. Watch by Moss. He turned it over at center. Coyle able to tip the puck free and Suter recovers for the wild. Brodine to Koivu. Charlie Coyle takes a check as he dumps it into the Phoenix zone. Brown tips it into the wild end. Spurgeon back after it for Minnesota. Spurgeon trying to fight free from Jeff Halpern and does. Wild come back to center with Mitchell. Mitchell dumps it in from the red line. Bryce to play it. Scandella holds his own for Minnesota. Coyotes start back. Brown at neutral ice. Watch by Mitchell as he plays it back in his own zone. Mitchell, Kanapka, and Rupp, the forward trio here for Minnesota. Rupp playing in his second game for the Wild this year. Mitchell avoids one man, throws it across for Rupp. Rupp onside at the line, dumps it into the Phoenix end, heads to the bench on a change. Connor Murphy plays it up the wall. Brown relays it out to center. Phoenix wants to change. Cook trying to catch him off guard. Tips it in. Bryce to play it behind the net. Fontaine pokes it for Brodziak. Brodziak trying to escape a hold. He's being held from behind by Murphy. Cook eventually goes down. Fontaine to Brodziak who tried to center. Cook after it on the far side to Ballard at the point. Ballard's pass intended down into the corner, intercepted by Verbata. Verbata brings it in. Yandel tried to feed Verbata, then breaking for the net. Brodziak comes away with it. Ballard up against the boards for Minnesota. Kicks it free for Clayton Stoner. And Stoner tips it off the wall and down into Phoenix territory. Michael Stone starts back for the Coyotes. Commonville battling with Shane Doan in the corner. There was some question as to whether Doan would play tonight, but he's in there for the Coyotes. They're back from gloves and holds. A long shot by Stone. No score in St. Paul. Welcome back to downtown St. Paul. No score between the Coyotes and the Minnesota Wild. This rink was a buzz about 10 a.m. this morning because the big surprise at morning skate, Zach Parisi was on the ice and participated in a full morning skate on our Sanford Health injury report. Here's what Parisi had to say after said practice. I was hoping I could give it a shot. Um, but uh, I think as or as it went on and as I try to do different things that are more uh, game-like and uh, kind of reactionary, just it hurt too much um, to, to, to try to be able to play. Breezy expected to be out two to three weeks, guys, so it was a big surprise that he was out there and talking to him. Felt better in that skate than he did in his streetches, which probably isn't a big surprise. The good news is he felt pretty decent after that skate, and we may see him well before that three-week time is over. Uh, sooner than later, but uh, to his point about uh, the jump and the game situations that he would have tried in this morning's skate, of course, that has to do with his game. I mean, he is a, a jump, an energy uh, kind of guy who needs to the first three steps to catch up to people, and he uses them very effectively. But I think if he can't be effective in that manner, he didn't want to go. Plus, the pain factor, and he has a good threshold, but uh, there is a certain point. Nino Niederreiter has it for Minnesota. Reaches center ice and dumps it in. Koivu in the corner. Tried to feed the point. It's intercepted by Moss, and the Coyotes come back. He said that he didn't want to put any kind of a timeline on it. He looked at those asking the questions, said, I know you guys need it, and you guys want to know. He said, I don't want to put a timeline on it, but I sure would like to get back sooner rather than later. <laughs> Two on one for Phoenix. Bodker 
into the Minnesota zone, and it's he scores. Yeah, that was in and out very quickly, and looked like it could have caught the crossbar, but it was up there in a hurry, and it's just a shot, a well played shot. Bodker didn't try to force a pass across. He just beat Baxter on a shot. And that's not always an easy thing to do, but transition hockey right here. Look at just waits, waits. You know that he was trying to find that pass. Look at his head. Then he decides to pick his head up and says, take it to myself. Puts it over the glove. Very nice for Bodker jamming that one upstairs. That's one thing, you know, we talk about Phoenix uh, being a good defensive team, but good defensive teams a lot of times are good transition teams as well. And even though they have given up plenty of goals this year, they still know how to transition that puck. For Phoenix, six of the season, number 89, and they've been scoring with a much higher frequency than in past years. Fourth in the National Hockey League at 3.17 goals per game. Schlemko back to pick it up in his own zone. Up bounces out to neutral ice. Ballard is there for Minnesota. Coyle tips it into the Coyote zone. Eric Morris pushes it ahead for Halpern into the Minnesota zone. The shot deflects wide of the goal. Ballard whacks it to the far wall. Chris Brown able to keep the puck in. Brown, a new face for the Coyotes. Just recalled today. Ian Murphy both joining the team today and in the lineup for Phoenix here tonight. Stoner for Mitchell. And after a rough and the Wild start back. Rupp dumps it in from the red line. In after it first into the corner. It stands one check, but then Murphy takes it away. And the Coyotes are quickly back out to center. Yandel into the Minnesota zone. Has it knocked away by Suters. He tried to play it across. Kennedy dumps it back in his own zone for Yandel. Lost the stone. And now it's driven into the Minnesota zone by Tim Kennedy. Wild haven't had much in the offensive zone here in the first half of the first period. Coyotes have the only goal on a two-on-one. Michael Bodker, sixth goal of the season. Ekman Larson crossed to Stone. Stone plays it off the end boards. Brodziak battling there. Suter turns around, discovers the puck, and starts out for the Wild. Still no Mikhail Granlund. Wild 12 players on the bench, five on the ice, two goaltenders. Suter. Cross to Brodeen, ahead to the Phoenix line, a long shot, gloved and held by Grice. We'll get a faceoff in the Phoenix goal. One nothing for the visitors. Nino Niederreiter continues to shine for Minnesota in his first season with the Wild. If you look at our Toyota key stat, his first 70 games, that included the two years in the Islander organization in the first part of this year. Look at his numbers, a minus 32 and only six points. In the last 19, like, he has really seemed to find his game. You know, I think this has uh, so much to do with maturity for him personally, but I think from a player perspective, in a general sense, it's about player management. Although I think the Wild have done a pretty good job of managing young players. Niederreiter's fifth overall. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to put him in the National Hockey League right away until he's ready. Uh, I think a guy like Mikhail Granlin for the Wild is a good example of what the Wild are doing. Mikhail Granlin was 10th overall, and did they throw him right in the National Hockey League last year? And maybe initially, but they realized he needed some more seasoning. So they moved him back and forth, and now he's being effective this season until he was injured. Uh, but it's about player management, and when it comes to young guys, you don't want to lose them that early. Niederreiter battling in the corner here for Minnesota. Plays it across to Suter. Suter's long shot. A stick saved by Grice. Niederreiter had just three points in 64 games with the New York Islanders the last two years. 13 in 25 games this year for Minnesota. Brodziak tips it into the Phoenix zone. Suter plays it back in. The Wild have to exit the zone. That gives Phoenix a chance to set up, and Moss carries it back the other way. Flip to the corner. Doan 
Race is in after it. Brodeen gets there first for Minnesota. Brodziak ahead on the wall. Wild got it to the line, but not out. Now Matt Cook has it. Cook across to Brodeen. Brodeen makes the safe play up the wall, and the Wild dump it in. Yandel back to pick it up for Phoenix. Relayed out by Ribeiro. Stoner back after it for the Wild. Across to Ballard. His pass out of the reach of Pominville, and this will be icing against the Wild. And a faceoff back in the Minnesota zone. If tonight's game goes to a shootout of the Wild win, everyone who brings a printed box score to participating Minnesota Army stores will receive a free order of curly fries. The offer is good for tomorrow only if the Wild win in an Army shootout tonight. Wild have had a little success in shootouts lately. Three and four overall this year in games that have gone to an extra session. Pretty good jousting going on. Yeah. <laughs> On the backside, Ballard and Tim Kennedy going at it. No love lost there, and that's one thing that Ballard was early on. And I think Kennedy figures that his stick might have been slashed by Ballard and possibly could break. That's a little trick that we've seen that players use before. You slash it in the lower part of the stick, and that thing just snaps quite easily at that point. Three on two for the Wild. Coil for Heatley. It got through the legs of Grice, but it winds up going just wide. Heatley behind the net. Good jump there by Heatley. Getting in a good position. Heatley tries to walk out front of the net. He lost the puck in the process. Take a look at this one as he gets on the back door, gets knocked down, and just slides one. But Grice got enough of it to keep the score 1-0 for the Coyotes. Ballard battling with Chip Chura. They go hard into the wild bench. They're still tangled up as the puck is just inside the wild line. Kanapka pulls Chip Chura off of his defenseman. And in the meantime, Phoenix gets a chance, and Backstrom makes a save on the long shot from the point. Well, Ballard, early on in the season, you remember he was very physical. That's what they want to see from him, and here he tries to put Chip Chura right in the bench. He keeps pushing. Chip Chura has something to say about that. The Wild have done a pretty good job of finishing a lot of checks in this game. Don't want to allow Phoenix to be free-flowing. Faceoff coming in the Minnesota zone. Manapka on the draw for the Wild against Halpert. Manapka wins the faceoff. Spurgeon banks it out to center ice. Gets by Schlenko, has to go back after it. Rupp rides him hard into the end boards. He and Kanapka battling to establish the forecheck for the Wild. Kanapka leaves it behind for Rupp. Sneaks by him, and Schlemko has it. Scandella able to hold the zone. Mitchell played it in. Now Mitchell's going to draw a penalty here. Mitchell will be called for the trip. And Minnesota goes a man short. Mitchell had fought down the wall to hold the zone, but then... Minnesota 17 to Mr. Interference. Once the Coyotes... Grabbed the puck, Mitchell took his man down. Interference, the call, and Phoenix goes on the power play. Well, Mike Gill said that uh, Mitchell's question would not be his skating, even though it was a lower body injury that kept him out, but more that he hadn't practiced in a long time. And how would his hands be? But right there, he got the knee out, took the tripping penalty in the wild with the first kill of the game. Stone hustles after the puck, plays it back for Yandel. Coyotes on the power play, eighth in the National Hockey League. See Minnesota's penalty killing numbers. They've been getting better lately. The Wild, 85% over their last 11 games. They've allowed five power play goals in those 11 games after giving 14 in their first 14 games. Puck back in the Coyote zone. Stone with it just outside the Minnesota line. Drives it into the wild end. Rodziak. 
had it for a moment in the corner. Wild not able to get it out of the zone. Stone plays across for Yandel. Yandel back to Stone. Stone goes down low for Ribeiro. Ribeiro to the point for Stone's one-timer. Backstrom deflects that wide. Up comes around to the near side boards. Ribeiro there for Phoenix. Walks into the circle. Now back pedals. Still 50 seconds in the power play. Going with a chance. And then Vermette sent it wide on the rebound. Vermette has it back. Across to Ribeiro. Ribeiro walks down the wall. Setting up. Still looking. Goes all the way across. Backstrom's down. Vermette's pass back to the point. Yandel's drive goes wide. A key block there by Brodziak. Nicholas Backstrom was swimming around. Couldn't get back in his net in time. That was a key save. Ribeiro goes to the far side. A shot saved by Backstrom. And he goes down on the rebound with Vermette nearby. A lot of pressure in front of that net. Dome was out there and was doing a very good job. That was Vermette that you saw also creating havoc. Look at the Wild mixing it up now with a few guys. Very physical in front of that Wild net. And now even more, now Matt Cook getting involved here. And Yandel throws a jab at Cook with the linesman in between. Rodziak and Stone continue their conversation. This is very interesting. Both teams trying to establish a little bit of physical dominance here. The Wild came out, did a pretty good job early in finishing their checks, although one of those hits did cost the Wild Gramlin, who still is not back. Let's we'll see how this plays out. Rodziak looks like he's going. Yandel looks like he's going. Cook and Yandel continue to bark at each other from the penalty box. Phoenix number three, Minnesota number 24, each two minutes for roughing. I'm sorry, that's Cook, not Brodziak in the box, but. Big part of penalty kill. The rebound right in front. Gets in front of that one. Backstrom also got running around a little bit around his net. Brodziak also made a key block on that penalty kill. You see uh, some friends in the box there as Cook goes in. Like it could be a four on three. Still 17 seconds left in the Phoenix power play. Excuse me, let's take five on four. Well, faceoff comes outside because the defenders came into the zone of Phoenix's. They moved down past the tops of the circles, and that's why the draw comes outside of the zone. Spurgeon for Minnesota. Fires it into the Phoenix bench. And this will bring a faceoff now into the wild zone. 11 seconds left. And the minor penalty to Tory Mitchell. Nightly on Fox Sports Live, Jay Onright and Dan O'Toole will bring you all the scores, news, and highlights that you need. Don't miss Fox Sports Live. Nightly on Fox Sports 1. To find Fox Sports 1 on your provider, go to foxsports1.com. Face off in the Minnesota zone. Loose in the circle. Winds up deflected to the far corner. Ekman Larson scoops it up for the Coyotes. Plays it in behind for Verbata. Verbata. Now a centering pass. Knocked out of the air. Hansel grabbed it and dropped it. No whistle. Verbata plays to the point. Yeah, Ekman bit of Larson a, has it. A little bit of a carry there in front of the net. Tried to place it over to the side where he'd have a shot on goal. Mitchell's back and has the puck for Minnesota. He's able to force it out of the wild zone. Played back in, but Phoenix has to tag up. Spurgeon with it for Minnesota. Marco Scandella across to Spurgeon. Spurgeon's pass off the mark and icing against the wild. Face off back in the Minnesota zone. It's under three and a half left in the first period. The wild have seemed a bit out of sync, and certainly some of the line shuffling. Plays no small part in that. Well, they're missing the forward now and the line shuffling uh, combined with that. And plus, maybe, even though Mike Gill's done a, a, a very good job of trying to mix different guys this season together and, and give everybody uh, an opportunity to play with a lot of different guys, it still is a quick adjustment you know, to try and find yourself on a different line. And as I mentioned, with Granlin going out and not back yet, it really has to do some shuffling now. Bodkru has the game's only goal. 
Drops it back to the point. Morris with a shot saved by Backstrom. Rebound is loose. Backstrom crawling across the crease. The Wild cover up nicely defensively. Yeah, tough rebound to give up, especially with a lot of bodies right in front of the net. Saw a couple goals go in like that against St. Louis. Bodker through neutral ice. Dumps it into the Minnesota zone. Halpern. Knocked down by Brodeen in the corner. Coyle trying to come up with the puck for the Wild. Fontaine finally plays it in behind the Wild goal. Suter dumps it out to neutral ice. Stone is there for Phoenix. That's been Larson to Halpern and now back for Stone. Stone recovers the errant pass. Brown tips it ahead, but Stoner intercepts at the Wild blue line. Keith Ballard, 233 games with the Coyotes from 2005 to 2008. Brodziak out to the point for Stoner, across to Ballard. Ballard's long shot looking for a tip. Comes to the point where Stoner holds, Pominville in behind for Koivu. Keatley setting up out front, Koivu trying to escape. Koivu still with it, then centered. Wheatley had moved away from the net, and the puck comes back out to neutral ice. Wheatley brings it in for Minnesota. Flips it down low for Pominville. Pominville for Koivu out front. His stick was tied up, didn't get all of his shot. And this will be icing against Phoenix in a faceoff back in the Coyote zone. Best offensive zone time for Minnesota in the first period. And it gives them an opportunity to make a line change and get some fresh bodies out there while Phoenix... Has to remain. There's Shane Doan. We thought he was a question mark, as he was until warm-ups, and he elected to go. Dave Tippett said this morning, it's pretty much up to him. I'm not going to tell a player that he can't play if he says he's ready, but they definitely wanted to make sure that he was physically ready to go. Especially not a guy with 342 <laughs> goals in his NHL career. <laughs> Fontaine, Coyle at center, filling in for Mikhail Granlund. Royal Battles got it in the circle. Fontaine shot blocked. Sooner holds his own. This shot deflected by Fontaine and winds up wide. Royal has it to Niederreiter. Niederreiter couldn't handle it cleanly. Regains control of the puck. Niederreiter still with it to Suter. Suter walks down the wall. Trying to go back to Niederreiter. And it's intercepted by Doan. Doan comes to the Minnesota line. Final minute of the first period. Suter. And it deflected away. Dolan recovers out to the point. Morris a long shot. Pat saved Backstrom. And Moss rolled it just wide of the rebound. And then the centering pass by Morris. Backstrom able to cover. He had some help from behind. It's 1 0 Coyotes. Game reset. Bodker with his sixth goal of the season. Nino Niederreiter has had a solid game. And Keith Ballard back for the Wild after missing the last time. Yeah, I mean, you know, you want to have him healthy because he provides the veteran leadership back from the blue line and you know he's gets his shots in and somehow they find a way and he's done that so many times this year not a really big lineup just a wrist shot and a lot of times when you do that it's enough to get the puck through and put the puck in the net so hopefully Ballard can stay healthy Wild right now for the first time in a long time have eight healthy D unfortunately they're number of healthy forwards is dwindling toward eight. Well, I mean, with, with having to send uh, goaltenders to the airport and bring them back, uh, and now Gradlin, they just sent down Zucker today with Kemper, and they're playing in Chicago uh, against the Chicago Wolves in the American Hockey League today. Uh, but just a lot of player shuffling. The Wild obviously do uh, have some depth in that department. But you, you want to see Granlin get back in and, and get back to his game as well. Keatley to Koivu. Koivu's taken down as he was leaving the Minnesota zone. 20 seconds left in the period. Backstrom knocks one down. Hands over the shot. It deflected wide before it got to Backstrom. Morris holds the zone. His shot blocked by Heatley. Danny Heatley has Pominville with him. Heatley to the slot. Bobbles the puck. On the backhand, he threw it wide. Scandella. Fighting with Verbata along the wall. And the horn sounds ending the first period with Phoenix in front. 
1 0. Here's the imaging path. Scoring so Would have loved for seeing Danny Eatley wind up and tee one up there, but Wild looking like they're getting better offensive chances as the period went on. And only Botker's odd man rush made the difference. Well, century link linked to what's next. Kevin Gorge will chat with Mike Rupp, who's playing his first home game of the season here tonight. And we'll also have a look at Charlie Coyle becoming wild. Phoenix one, Minnesota zero after one. We're getting ready to drop the puck on period number two. We're joined by a wild assistant coach, Darby Hendrickson. And Darby, obviously, you don't want to lose a player like Granlin early in this game. And as a forward, it shuffles everything up. How do you adjust uh, from a coaching perspective? Well, unfortunately, we've got some guys who can play in the middle. One's Charlie Coyle. So uh, we've we got guys who've got to be versatile. You've got to be ready to go that way. Uh, but I think the biggest thing for us as a group, you might be playing with different guys, but get our feet moving a little bit here, especially through the neutral zone, get some pucks in. We love to attack off the rush, but if we've got to get pucks behind them and get in and start our four track from there, that's going to be big. Anthony and Mike, up to you. Well, I like that point. You can't carry the puck in. Essentially, he's saying it's okay to chip and chase. Sometimes you have to do that, especially if you're getting some solid pressure in the neutral zone and at the offensive blue line. We've seen that a couple times with Cook in that period, dumping it down and trying to win along the back wall. Some drawing going on in the faceoff circle before the puck even hits the ice between Brodziak and Hansel. We're underway in the second period, and the Wild are offside just seconds in. Well, we'll see what the second period brings in terms of line combinations. Mike Gill Wilson's going to stay with everything as is right from the drop of the puck unless it started to work early for him. We still don't have any report on Mikhail Granlin. Granlin played just 29 seconds in his return to the lineup. He had missed the last two games for Minnesota. Didn't play Saturday in Winnipeg or Monday in St. Louis. Kennedy picks up a bouncing puck. Banks it off the wall into the Minnesota zone. Jonas Brodeen back to pick it up for the Wild. He finds Cook at center ice. Cook across for Fontaine. Hooked off of his stick before he could enter the Phoenix zone. Now he fights to dump it in. The Wild have to exit the zone to get onside. Schlemko plays it into the Minnesota zone. The Wild are quickly back with Koivu. Koivu works his way to the outside. Pominville breaks for the net. Koivu hit the back of the net. Pominville walks out front. Pominville wheels. Had a roll off of his stick as he tried to pull the trigger. Now he centers for Coyle. Coyle didn't get all of it. And the Coyotes clear to center. Koivu trying to jam it loose. Bounces out to neutral ice. Doan into the Minnesota zone. Koivu comes away with the loose puck. Plays it back to Marco Scandella. And now Jared Spurgeon with it. Koivu back for Spurgeon. Spurgeon winds and fires. Pat St. Pominville on the rebound. And it deflects off a stick and out of play. Connor Murphy looks like he's the one who got his stick on that and it was a good play generated by Jared Spurgeon's shot. Pominville with the rebound and the last couple of shifts, the Wild have been able to do this, carry the puck into the zone. Look at that, making the goaltender stretch. Pominville getting closer and closer. He had another shift earlier where he was able to step out from behind the net, unable to get the shot off, but he's starting to get some looks here now. Clayton Stoner back to pick up the puck in the Minnesota zone. Leaves it for Niederreiter. Back to Stoner. Ballard tips it ahead. Brodziak at center ice. Into the Phoenix zone as it knocked off of his stick. Clinkhammer trying to jump around Ballard's check. Stoner slides it across and Ballard has it. Back to Stoner. And the puck deflects out of play. Faceoff will come in the neutral zone. 
Minnesota had only five shots in the first period, three of them coming for Nino Niederreiter. Now Kyle Brodzak looks like he's got a burr under his saddle in this game. He's been very physical, some extracurriculars after the whistle. Games like this, and especially between these two teams where you know, one goal games are more the norm than not. It's going to be a tightly contested battle here. And actually, Phoenix has done very well this year in one goal games. Wild have fared well there, too. In fact, their last six wins have been by one goal. Coyotes into the Minnesota zone. Ekman Larson slides to the far corner. Chip Chura trying to work free from Scandella. Halpern tried to go back to Chip Chura. That was tipped away by Spurgeon. Halpern to the point. Ekman Larson brings it around to the far side. Mike Rupp is the first man there for Minnesota. He's able to play it out to neutral ice. Halpern scoops it up and brings it in for Phoenix. Around the far side, Tori Mitchell plays it back for Scandella. Kanapka bottled the pass. Verbata is able to keep it in for the Coyotes. Rupp ahead for Mitchell. Mitchell fires it in. It's on goal as the Wild make a change. Long pass sends Kennedy into the Minnesota zone. Kennedy cut off by Spurgeon. Hansel threw it out front. Brodine got a piece of that. At the point, Schlemko holds. In behind the net, Kennedy. Kennedy centers, and they score. Verbata tips it by Backstrom on the centering pass from behind the net, and the Coyotes have a 2-0 lead. Looked like a pretty innocuous play there, and all of a sudden, Verbata just takes a swipe at it. Puts one in the net. They're slowly chipping away at the Minnesota Wild. Look at this. Kennedy just centers it and just takes a chop at it. It wasn't really a pure shot, but... Just enough to slide it by Backstrom's blocker. I don't think Verbata realized he'd scored until a couple of seconds afterwards. Verbata with his seventh of the year, 20th point on the season. Scoring for Phoenix, his seventh of the season. Number 17, Verbata. Collision just inside the Phoenix line. Pominville climbs back to his feet. Yandel comes to the red line and dumps it in. Suter hooks it to the near corner for Brodine, and now Pominville has it. Back across to Ryan Suter. Suter looking for Heatley. Pominville picks it up. He fires toward the net, and it deflects into the netting and out of play. The Wild host the Flyers Monday at 7. The first 5,000 fans in attendance receive a Matt Cook player card magnet courtesy of Fox Sports North. For details, visit foxsportsnorth.com and click on the upcoming events banner for details. One of the rare exceptions coming up for Minnesota where they're not battling one of the Western Conference elite on Monday against Philadelphia. Nine of the Wilds' 11 games starting Monday in St. Louis. Nine out of 11 against current playoff teams in the Western Conference. Well, here's where you really want to be healthy. And unfortunately for the Wild, right now missing two of their top six forwards. Parisi, we're hopeful. Everyone's hopeful. He's hopeful that he'll get back within a few days, hopefully less than a week. And Mikhail Granlin went out 29 seconds into this uh, game when he tried to finish a check. And we haven't heard from him since. Ballard to Cook. His pass for Fontaine is tipped back into the Minnesota zone. Great to see what happens over the next 48 hours. But it would not surprise anybody if Zach Parisi was back in uniform as early as this weekend. Fontaine plays ahead to Brodziak. Matt Cook after it in the corner. Centers Fontaine was tied up. And the Coyotes are back at center ice. Mentioned earlier that Parisi said he didn't want to put any official timeline on it, but I thought his answer to the question about how quickly he could be back was answered very simply when he said, I want to get back as fast as I can because I don't like missing games. I don't like sitting out. 
I think the biggest statement was the fact that he was out there this morning, not only before the skate, or, but to go out there and actually skate. It was the the, uh, the XL obviously was empty except for the media types, if you want to call us that. And there was a buzz across the lower bowl as not only Parisi get out there in full equipment, but the fact that he was taking line rushes with the top line and. You know, we're, we're very hopeful people. We, we, we all assumed that we would see him out here this evening. Okay, it was the kind of effort that you want to see from one of your leaders. Verbata plays it back into his own zone. 2 nothing Coyotes. First period goal by Bodker. Second period goal by Verbata. It's surprising that Parisi is out because if you look at his history, he obviously had the injury in the 2010-11 season, but other than that, he hasn't missed more than one game in a season in his career. Yeah, that is that is amazing. You know, Pominville has that same kind of record, and guys like that, Mike Gill, when he was being asked this morning about the fact that Breezy was out there at all, and he said, well, you, you can't play that many years in, in this league and play that many games without having some kind of a special uh, fortitude to get you out there on any given night, even when you're playing with pain. Coyotes have been very quick and efficient exiting their zone tonight. But here they're offside, and we'll get a neutral zone face off. 2 nothing for the visitors. Two Minnesota Zero fans last week in our broadcast. It was all about tweet for a sweet. Get a tweet in what you're favorite and most thankful for over the holidays during this wild season. We got two sweets full of wild fans, 30 sets of tickets, and we got a UMD Bulldog here who was lucky enough to win. Her name is Christine. Obviously, a lot of things to be thankful for during this wild season. What was your tweet that got you the big win? Um, I'm most th thankful for being able to watch the wild games as a family during this season. And it, it does bring families together just like Thanksgiving, so hopefully you and your family have a great Thanksgiving tomorrow. Definitely. Thank you. You too. These fans, guys, are chomping at the bit for uh, being thankful for some wild offense and some red lights. We'll see if we can get it going here. Well, you get the feel like they're just waiting for a reason to cheer here tonight. So far, there has not been much in the way of offensive chances for the Wild. They trail the Coyotes 2-0. And officially right now with only seven shots on goal. And not seen a lot of offensive zone time. And when you're facing a goaltender that just played in three games this year, I mean, it's not like it's a season. A goaltender like Mike Smith. We expect to see Mike Smith, and Mike Smith has started 22 games this year. That's tied for the league lead with Roberto Luongo in starts. And uh, he's getting a rest tonight, so Bryce is in. And the Wild have been unable to really test him. Icing here against Phoenix. Face off back in the Coyote zone. Smith had started the last 10. Rice making his first start since Halloween here tonight. Smith might need a night out just to groom that mustache. Yeah. He's got them all working hard. Face off one by Koivu. Got it to Spurgeon, who just does manage to hold the zone. His entry hit the linesman, and that gives Phoenix a chance to clear. Suter to Koivu, who redirects into the Phoenix end. A little shift in B partners right now as well with Suter and Spurgeon out there. Hammondville back in his own zone. Suter wraps it around for Spurgeon. Hammondville knocked down after he dumps it into the Coyote zone. Schlemko quickly flips it ahead, and once again, the Coyotes are efficiently out of their zone. Long one gloved and held by Backstrom. Wild trying to extend their home winning streak. I mentioned it earlier, they've won their last six here at home and 10 of 11. Look at their numbers overall this season. Second best in shots allowed on home ice at just under 23 per night. Well, and surprisingly, the Wild, even though they haven't been able to generate a lot of offense in this game, are dominating the faceoff circle. 
And right now, upwards of 61% in the faceoff circle. And we're going to get a penalty here against Ribeiro after he was ejected from the faceoff. Thanks, ever see that sports for light conduct. He started barking and eventually said enough to earn two minutes in the box, and the Wild will get a chance on the power play. Well, you know, we were just talking about home advantage. I mean, that's one of the advantages is you get to go in to the draw second. And there's another guy getting tossed. Oh, there it is right there. Get, uh, too much chatter, and the linesman can make that, that uh, call. So Minnesota with a chance on the power play, their first opportunity of the night. Seventh best in the National Hockey League at 21.5%. Moss able to clear. Wild have Hammonville on the point along with Ryan Suter. Danny Heatley up front replaces Zach Parisi. So it's Koivu, Coyle, and Heatley on the power play for the Wild. Coyle dumps it in. He's the first man on the puck, around to the far side. Suter down the wall, trying to hold the zone. Karam's into the corner. Morris has it and sends it the length of the ice. Axstrom banks it to the far side for Suter. Niederreiter has his pocket pick from behind. Hansel's pass was intercepted at center, and Niederreiter has it for the Wild. Suter to Brodziak. They're onside at the line. Niederreiter carries to the corner, tried to go to the point. Hansel got a piece of it. Now Morris to Hansel, and he clears again. First time we've heard the Bluebirds in this building in quite some time. Brodziak at center, and it poked away at the Phoenix line. Spurgeon brings it in. Spurgeon sets up along the wall. Plays down low. Fontaine sets up behind the net. Centers! And Niederreiter's shot is gloved by Grice. This is becoming the norm here after whistles. And Niederreiter does not back down in that circumstance. A couple of cross checks thrown. Right in front, though, but not before he gets a good chance here. Shot deflects up, rolls into the glove. Ekman Larson uh, gives him a little bit of lumber right afterwards. I like to see that side of Niederreiter. We've talked about his good hands and good size along the end wall, but got to have a little nastiness as well. Pay the price. Final seconds of a Minnesota power play after the Coyotes able to clear once more. And Ribeiro is back. The shot by Niederreiter, the only shot on goal in the power play for the Wild. Heatley tied up in the corner. Koivu joins the battle. Heatley emerges with the puck to the point for Suter. Suter centers. Koivu with a tip saved by Grice. Koivu has it in the corner. Plays it back in for Coyle. Coyle fights off a check. To Spurgeon. Spurgeon taps to the near side corner. Nobody there for Minnesota. And the Coyotes clear to center. Suter has it. His pass for Coyle. Hit him in the skate. Heatley slides it across for Coyle. Kanapka works his way down low. Got it to Heatley. Heatley bumped in the corner. Still with the puck. Heatley plays across to the point. Stoner a long shot. Grice with a save. And he just covers the rebound. Minnesota finally starting to get some traffic. 2-0 Phoenix. Oh, wow. Trailing 2 to nothing. They've had a lot of work to do in terms of moving players around the lineup. 29 seconds into his first shift of the game. Mikhail Granlin takes the worst end of that. Even though he initiated the hit, you can see he's talking to the trainer, Don Fuller, and he elected to go to the locker room after that, and he has not returned. That was in the first period. Wild have since tried to find 
some kind of offense mixing guys around. Mitchell in the corner. Cook in for Minnesota as well. Stoner down the boards, holds the zone. Cook jamming away, now Mitchell with it. Mitchell trades places with Cook, feeds Stoner at the point. Stoner back to Mitchell. Mitchell's long shot, tipped, and just wide by Cook. Cook bothered from behind by Schlemko. Cook able to hold the zone for Minnesota. Cook emerges to the circle, his shot blocked. And Bodker picks it up, he can't get it out of the zone. Kanapka holds. Cook tried to feed the point. Intercepted by Bodker, whose pass is too far for Vermet, and it'll be icing against the Coyotes. Cook was a late addition to that line. Mike Gill sent him over the boards late. He had a good shift. Fox Sports is proud to partner with Johns Hopkins Medicine, one of this year's Fox Sports Supports Charities. Johns Hopkins is at the forefront of groundbreaking research into autoimmune disorders like multiple sclerosis and lupus. Join the fight against autoimmune diseases. Join it now by visiting hopkinsmedicine.org slash fox. Well, time out, I think, taken here by uh, Dave Tippett. Icing call and a 2 nothing score midway through the game. Phoenix takes its timeout. The Wild showing a little more energy here. And you talked about Matt Cook having a good shift there. I I think this is the kind of game where Matt Cook can be a big factor. It, it's his style of hockey. It's uh, grinding it out, getting nasty after the whistle even, uh, being physical in different circumstances. I think Matt Cook could be a factor, and that line could be a factor. Brodziak's played a little bit nasty in this game as well. So, you know, maybe those guys could be the ones that create this energy that the Wilds seem to be lacking throughout this game so far. who on the draw for the Wild against Vermet. Coyotes win it. Morris with it. This clearing attempt deflects to the near side. Vermet brings it in. Bodker breaking for the net. Koivu back checking. Got just enough of it to disrupt that centering pass. Heatley into the corner. Bobbled the puck. Bodker digs it loose. Klinkhammer tried to center. Coyle has his man tied up. The puck was loose. Klinkhammer shot trickled wide. Hansel tried to center. Brodine pokes that back up against the end boards. And Koivu has it for Minnesota. Koivu tied up by Klinkhammer. Brodine in behind. Orion Suter who starts out. Suter got it to Heatley who chips it off the glass. And down into the Phoenix zone. Oliver ekman Larson, talented defenseman for the Coyotes, starts back. Pass deflected in by Kennedy. And this will be icing against Minnesota. Our window concepts, game reset. Vodka scored in the first period for the Coyotes. Verbata scored in the second. Shane Doan. It is 20th point of the season. He continues a scoring surge. Zach Parisi did skate this morning, but was not able to go. And this is his first game since signing with the Minnesota Wild. And by no means has the Wild given up a lot of glaring chances in this hockey game. They've only given up 14 of their own. But in the first period, it was an odd man rush, a two-on-one, and then a quick one-timer from the slot in the second here. And that's a difference in the game. Doan couldn't get it past Spurgeon. Yandel tied up by Niederreiter. Spurgeon again down the wall, able to hold the zone for Minnesota. Great strength by Spurgeon. Walks off the wall. His shot tipped by Niederreiter and a save by Grice. Again, Niederreiter is right in the thick of it. I think that makes him effective when he can when he can do that size and strength. Spurgeon does a good job of keeping the puck in. Good pinch, especially on a strong guy like Shane Doan. He gives up a lot of weight, a lot of size, but Spurgeon manages to use his leverage to get the puck out. He's had a couple of shots in this game. They 
faceoff coming in the Phoenix zone. Off the glass and all the way down. Icing waved off. Ballard back to pick it up for Minnesota across the suitor. Lead early, so important in a matchup between these teams. Both teams have been tough to beat when they score first. Phoenix coming in tonight, 10-1-1. Minnesota, 11-1-2. Bouncing puck, kicked wide by Kanapka. Kanapka goes down in the corner. Morris starts out with the puck. Chip Chura hangs it into the Minnesota zone. Brown tried to center. That was intercepted. Matt Cook has it for the Wild. Flips it up in the air as Minnesota makes a change. Ekman Larson back to pick it up. Brown banks it ahead. Kennedy jams it past Ballard. Those two continue the fight on the far side. Fischel went down. Hansel tried to walk out front. Coyle had him tied up. Now a centering pass deflected by Backstrom and Miko Koivu leads the rush the other way. Koivu flips it in, but Heatley was in early offside against the line. Phoenix 2, Minnesota 0, late second period. Now through December 8th. Pay no ticket fees for some of the biggest wild games of the season. When purchasing tickets, use the code TMNTX. Visit wild.com slash no fees for details. Draw will come in the neutral zone. Hansel against Brodziak. Minnesota controls. Brodine with it. Commonville wraps it into the Phoenix zone. Grice is there to play it. Brodziak to Niederreiter. Niederreiter pinned up against the boards. Bill manages to control the puck as Stone continues to slam him into the glass. Puck bounced out front, but Brodziak was tied up. Kennedy back for the Coyotes. Brodziak intercepts at the Minnesota line. Pondonville brings it in. Scandella breaks for the net. Brodziak fires. It's blocked by Kennedy. Brodziak centered, and that hit a skate and deflects back the other way. Verbata carries to center for the Coyotes. Drops to Kennedy. Back to Verbata. To Hansel. This one time redirect is well off target. Verbata walks free from Brodziak. Tied up by Brodine as he tried to pull the trigger. Hansel to the point where Murphy holds. Scandella back to pick it up for Minnesota. Got it to the line, but Yandel keeps it in for Phoenix. Niederreiter flips it into the Coyote zone. Yandel back to pick it up. Minnesota changes four and a half to go. In the second period, Wild still looking for their first marker of the night. They trail the visitors 2-0. Koivu's pass knocked down by Heatley at center. Now Koivu has it back. Waits for Coyle to get on side and dumps it in. Coyle on the attack. Suter able to hold the zone for Minnesota. He and Koivu battle with Bodker. Bodker comes away with the puck. Icing waved off. As they say, it was tipped at neutral ice. Suter back to pick it up. Suter ahead to Koivu. Into the Phoenix zone. Rings around to the near side. Coyle and Heatley there. Trying to get something established on the forecheck. It's been tough for the Wild tonight. Doan to Moss. In behind Rivero. Ribeiro hit by Suter. Suter takes a shove, then a hit from Ribeiro. First of three meetings between these teams this year. The next two will both take place in Phoenix. One in January, one in March. Last year, the Wild won two of three head-to-head -head meetings with the Coyotes. Brown. Plays it into the corner. Chip Chura tried to center. That was off the mark. To the point where Yandel holds, but his shot is well wide. Matt Cook waits for it on the boards. 
and flips it out to center ice. Ballard with a hit. That sends Fontaine into the zone. Kanapka looking for support out front. And a penalty coming against Phoenix. Minnesota's going to go on the power play with two and a half minutes left in the second period. Tripping is the call against Halpern. Well, the Wild were just unable to generate. Phoenix number 14, Martin Pillar. Tripping. Generate any offense. So maybe this will help them. Just catches the laces as Fontaine keeps driving into the zone. That was actually created by a nice play by Keith Ballard. Ballard forced the issue. Got in there with a good hit. It allowed Fontaine to get the puck and carry it into the zone. Uh, the Wild aren't creating a ton of offensive chances. This is the one you have to take advantage of because there haven't been a lot of penalties either. Just the second power play for Minnesota. The first was unimpressive. Spurgeon back to pick it up. Spurgeon and Ballard at the point for Minnesota with Brodziak, Fontaine, and Niederreiter up front. No Parisi tonight for the Wild. No Granlund after 29 seconds of ice time in the first period. Coyotes again able to clear. Spurgeon backpedals into his own zone. 90 seconds left in the power play as Spurgeon starts out. Reaches center and drives it in. Brodziak to the point for Ballard. Ballard. Long wrist shot hit escape. Hansel has it. And again, the Coyotes quickly clear. Well, the communication on a power play is crucial. A lot of it nonverbal. And with a lot of new faces moving around on that power play unit, both units for that matter, it's just not, it's not easy with the way the puck movement is going. Centering pass for Koivu. He was tied up. And the Coyotes again will be able to clear the puck. Nothing doing on the power play for Minnesota. 40 seconds left. Suter to Coyle at center. Commonville brings it in. Vermet. Commonville gloves and drops. Works his way to the middle to Koivu. Koivu tried to go down low. Regains the puck. 20 in the power play. Koivu to the circle. Heatley tried to center. That's broken up by Morris. Heatley in the corner. Koivu with it. To the point for Pominville. Suter. Back to Pominville. Koivu fires. Got through to the goal. Grice with the save. And the Coyotes clear as the power play comes to an end for Minnesota. A good one-timer there did get through by Koivu, but Grice was in, in play. Kanapka to Mitchell! Cook on the back door, couldn't tip it in. Scandella holds his own for the Wild. Kanapka pokes to the corner, 15 seconds left in the period. Scandella bobbled, got it through, and again it was tipped, and Grice got a pad on it. Wild with their best chances of the period here in the final 30 seconds. Mitchell tips it in. The second period will come to an end with Phoenix in front, 2-0. Well, these are the kind of chances you want to see all game long. Look at this. Right in front, back door, just couldn't stuff it in there. And the Wild also had a good deflection in front. Grice came up with a couple of good saves, but it needs to happen more frequently than just the last 30 seconds. Coming up in our second intermission, we'll take a look around the National Hockey League. It's Phoenix 2, Minnesota 0 after 2. Phoenix 2, Minnesota 0 after 2. Minnesota lost their leading scorer on Monday night in St. Louis. Zach Parisi blocking a shot from Alexander Steen. He took it off the foot. X-rays were negative, and the Wild announced that Parisi would be out two to three weeks. He came out for an early skate this morning, said he felt better than he expected, so went back in, threw his equipment on, and came out and joined the team for morning skate. Took line rushes. 
but then as he tried to elevate the pace, he found that he would not be able to go. I was hoping I could give it a shot, um, but uh, I think as or as it went on and as I try to do different things that are more uh, game-like and uh, kind of reactionary, just it hurt too much um, to 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 try to be able to play. So now the question is, when will Zach be back? Could it be as early as Friday night against Colorado? What I find interesting is none of the medical staff told him to go put his skate on. Coaching staff didn't tell him to put his skate on. He went and did that himself, which tells you that he's determined to get back. And I think Friday, it could be that day. And you, you look at the back-to-back, -back, uh, less than 24 hours apart, they play a game at home and then go to Colorado. Our Bud Light What's On Tap. Minnesota, as I mentioned earlier, in the midst of a stretch where they will play 9 of 11 games against teams currently sitting in the top 8 in the West. Started with the loss in St. Louis Monday, continuing here tonight. And as you can see there, the back-to-backs of Colorado, Chicago on the horizon as well. Well, the Wild, as I mentioned, do have the scoring in their arsenal right now. And yes, they're missing Granlin. Yes, they're missing Parisi. But they still have players that can put the puck in the net. The Wild just need to have a more concerted effort here towards the net and into the offensive zone. Need to start clicking here. Hopefully any line juggling that's gone on all game long has given each line a little bit of a feel for who they're playing with right now. Wild's best chances of the second period came in the final minute or so of the period. We'll see if that can carry over into the third as we're underway at the XL Energy Center. Wild looking for their seventh consecutive win on home ice. Faceoff will come back in the Phoenix zone. I think the problem for the Wild, though, is that even though Phoenix has given up a lot of goals this year, they are the type of team that when they get the lead, they can play their game. They can stifle you. Bryce has played well as well. So a little bit of an uphill battle without question. You mentioned earlier, Anthony, about teams that score first and carry leads into the second and third periods. Those are all uphill battles, but I still think the Wild have the kind of players that can overcome that. And this game has taken on the look of what you've grown to see from Phoenix year after year. A team that tries to get on top of you and then just turn the game into a slugfest. And you heard Derek Morris say that during our intermission. Said, we just need one more ugly period. Rodziak tips it in for Minnesota. Schlemko back to pick it up. Verbata now has it. Banks it out to neutral ice. Hansel carries to the Minnesota line. Spurgeon and Kennedy in the corner. Battle for it. Brodziak tried to steer it ahead for Coyle. Now Scandella feeds Coyle up the wing. Coyle stops along the wall. Back to Scandella. Hansel picks it up in the corner. And plays it ahead. The Coyotes are back to center ice. Kennedy knocks it into the Minnesota zone. Spurgeon back to pick it up. This does avoid a hit by Hansel. Koivu flips it across. Spurgeon picks it up. Carries into the Phoenix zone. Spurgeon winds and fires. And a blocker saved by Grice. Rebound comes all the way out to center ice. Spurgeon's taken a few of those shots from the wing. A couple of created scoring chances. So I like the fact that he's doing that. Heatley flips it into the Phoenix zone. Murphy back to pick it up. Gives it off to Yandel, who starts out of his own zone. Watch by Cook. Murphy tips it ahead for Ribeiro. Tried to cut to the middle. Kanopka knocked it away. Ribeiro has it back. Cook just got enough of it to disrupt Ribeiro's shot attempt. Cook flips it in with Fontaine racing after it. Ekman Larson back for Phoenix. Those two get tangled up. Fontaine goes down in a heap behind the net. Ekman Larson lost his stick. Cook tried to jam one in. Caroms to the point. Ballard can't hold. Ekman Larson has his stick back, and the Wild bring it back in. Cook to Ballard. A shot and a save by Grice. Good play there. Matt Cook's been very visible in this hockey game. 
I mentioned earlier this is his kind of game. And look at this quick little feed in front can't get it to go. But he regroups and they get it right back into the zone. And actually it was Ballard to Cook right back to Ballard. Talk about a give and go. This is a give and go from the neutral zone on in. And it was a good feed and a good shot. Bryce again coming up with a solid save for the Coyotes. Burn removed from the faceoff circle. Charlie Coyle on the draw for Minnesota. Coyle has spent part of tonight on the wing and part of it at center. And Coyle now parking at the linesman. Remember, we've already had one penalty called in the faceoff circle tonight. I think it's what you say sometimes. <laughs> or is it how you say it? Could be a little bit of both. <laughs> Coyle doesn't say much. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to know what the threshold is because every linesman and referee has a has a different one they're usually pretty generous but uh, sometimes the wrong words are said Suter got it ahead to Mitchell and the puck deflects into the Phoenix bench and out of play face off will come in the neutral zone good to see Tori Mitchell back in the lineup of course he got hurt in the Montreal game last week he was put on IR and was taken off and that's why Jason Zucker went back. Josh Harding backing up tonight. That's why Kemper went back. Both of them got back to Iowa, actually, for the Iowa Wild in Chicago. Hansel with a shot, gloved and held by Backstrom. And a draw coming in the Minnesota zone. Backstrom stopped 14 of 16 Phoenix shots to this point. Starting his third consecutive game. Picked up the win in Winnipeg. Was beaten in St. Louis. Murphy with a long one off the end wall. Brodziak there for Minnesota. Still a good debate to be had there about whether that Parisi goal, if allowed, would have changed the momentum of the game. I think it certainly would have. Instead, it was a two-goal swing. As St. Louis scored right afterwards and then did very much what Phoenix is doing right now. Just take control of the game. You lead the game. You play your, your style. You're forcing the opposition to press a little bit more. Maybe make some riskier plays, riskier moves. Defensive zone faceoff for Minnesota. Boy, who... Wins the draw, pulls it back to Scandella. Charlie Coyle, D'Amico Koivu at center. Commonville brings it in. Got it to Spurgeon, a backhander on goal, saved by Grice, and he hangs on. Fun to watch the maturation process of a young player, and Nito Niederreiter is that. A couple of good looks in this game in front of the net, but, but what I do like is the, the physical nature that he provides. And the fact that he's not going to back down from circumstances that he's going to face. That's all part of the growth of a young player to know where, where that line is and when not to cross it. But you know, he's shown that he's, he's able to push that line further and further uh, the more physical confrontations he faces. Leader Ryder with a game-high three shots to this point. Coyle and after the puck for Minnesota. Vermette emerges for the Coyotes. Stoner back for Minnesota. Across to Ballard. Boy, who carries out. They're onside at the line. Pominville to Coyle. A shot. And a pad save rebound. Pominville. And a save by Grice. I think the quality of chances the Wild are seeing are starting to grow. They're definitely forcing Grice to make some top-notch saves here, and not surprisingly, he's making them. He's played well this year, and right now he's moving like a goaltender who's played a lot more than he has. But a good shot there by Coyle and a great follow-up by Pominville, and those are the type of shots that go in the net. Up 
Walker wins the draw. Fontaine drops it back. Long shot. Got through. And with Canopka nearby, Grice hangs on. Once again, a good idea. Good idea. As a goaltender, you're facing that kind of shot. You're already thinking about what that shot's going to do because that shot itself won't beat you, but it's the other possibilities, the deflections, the screens, the, the rebound, that could really hurt you. So I like those kind of shots when players just wrist them in there. The late ejection from the faceoff circle, and they'll redrop the puck. Set the clock first before this faceoff in the Phoenix zone. Wow, they're really forcing these guys to play up to snuff in the faceoff circle, <laughs> not giving them an inch. Took a long time for that linesman to drop that puck. Brodine plays it in and spins to avoid a hit by Hansel. You'd think that that would benefit the Wild, given the fact that they are allowed to lean in second. Brodine works his way to the middle. Long shot deflected wide. Cook and Morris go to the corner. Fontaine at the half wall. Try to get it to Kanapka. The puck loose for a moment. Caught in the skates of Schlemko. Who then flips it all the way down the ice. It'll be icing against Phoenix. And remember, they used their timeout earlier in the game after a couple of icing calls. Faceoff will come in the Coyote zone. And an opportunity for Mike Gill to make another line change. Goes with a top line. Dave Tippett won't be happy about the fact that he's got a line out there that now has to face the Wilds' top line of Coyle, Commonville, and Troy Booth. Top deep pairing out there as well. Mike Yo shifted his deep pairings around in this game. He's got Ballard with Suter. Suter's shot deflected to the corner. And this will give Morris a chance to allow Phoenix a line change. Verbata dumps it in from the Minnesota line and the Coyotes head off. Ballard starts out for the wild. Across to Koivu. Koivu fights his way through a hit along the wall. Ballard trying to hold it in for Minnesota. Does for a moment, but now Rivero emerges. Across to Ekman Larson, who plays it in. Rivero knocked off the puck by Ballard. Good job covering up out front by Koivu. As Doan tried to walk out front on the back end. Well, Ballard getting after it with Butker. Right in front of the net while the play is at the almost the other end. Rivero now throws a hit at Ballard. Ballard climbs back to his feet, and those two still barking at each other as the puck comes the other way. Niederreiter. Niederreiter fires. Rice went down awkwardly early, but the shot went wide. Lots of time there for Niederreiter as he turned his back to the goal and then tried to spin around. Did get a shot off, but uh, Rice was, was there in some fashion. Scandella plays it in. Looked like Vermette took a stick in the face. Centering pass. Heatley's there. Jamming away. And it winds up wide. Had a good chance on the first opportunity. And then by the time his second shot was taken, Grice was there. Poked away. And it's a two-on-one with Scandella back. Bodker walks in. Saved by Backstrom. Well, we've seen that before. This time... Defensively, they cut Botker off a little bit sharper. Didn't give him as much of an angle to shoot with, and that gave Backstrom the ability to cut the angle down. Heatley picks it up for Minnesota, banks it ahead. Fontaine hit by Bodker. Heatley jams it into the Phoenix zone, and the Wild make a change. Backstrom gloves and holds this long one. Annie Heatley with a chance for Minnesota, but so far, still coming up empty. Our Toyota get caught up. Michael Bodker on a two-on-one scores his sixth of the year in the first period. And then it was Verbata on a centering pass, making it 2-0 in the second. And this was just a swipe at the puck, but it was enough to get by the blocker, Backstrom. It's been 2-0 since. 
and it's been a comfortable 2-0. Although the Wild have had some scoring chances. The Coyotes can retain that 2-0 lead and actually just had a two-on-one of their own. Botker again, although this time he was stopped by Baxter. Chip Chura got it to Brown. Cut off by Suter. A shot gets through. Pad saved by Backstrom. Alpern takes the check out to the point. Murphy's shot deflects off the glass. Chip Chura wheels and fires. That deflects wide and Suter's after it. Battle along the wall. Yandel holds his own for Phoenix. Brown and Ballard collide as the puck comes to the near side. Murphy's shot deflects wide of the net. Suter and Brown collide there. Brown playing without a helmet. Heads to the bench as Yandel starts back. Murphy drives one in. Connor Murphy playing in his second NHL game. The Coyotes first pick in 2011. Scored a goal in his NHL debut. Wild offside. We're going to face off in the neutral zone. Wild made a couple moves today, one of which was Jason Zucker going down to Iowa. He has two goals tonight for the Iowa Wild, who lead their game at Chicago 3-1. Well, it's one thing that Chuck Fletcher mentioned before the Ottawa game, actually, when they were just bringing Zucker up. And that is that it took Zucker a little while after getting sent down the first time to really kind of get his game going. And most players, the young guys especially, spend a little time thinking about what they were doing wrong in the NHL rather than getting back to work in the AHL, getting their game back together. So hopefully that's a very good sign there by Zucker uh, to be getting his game uh, going in the offensive realm back in the American Hockey League tonight. It'll just help you get back up quicker. Scandella with it. Coyle tips it in from center. Morris back to pick it up for the Coyotes. Leaves it behind for Schlemko. Schlemko turns it over, put it right in the stick of Brodziak. He tried to center for Heatley, but that was tipped and comes out to center ice. Spurgeon back for the Wild. Stoner carries in. Long one pad saved by Grice. Allowed a juicy rebound, but nobody there for Minnesota. Heatley in the corner. As it poked away by Ekman Larson. Niederreiter with a long one. Glove. Danny Heatley's had a strong game here. Some good opportunities, and watch when he gets out of the corner. He fights off a check to get this, and he bats it out of the air. I mean, that puck was dropping, and he had to, he had to grab his own stick away from the defender. Watch him just pull away and then jam that puck in the net. He's been making a lot of strong moves here around the net. It's a good confidence game for Danny Heatley, and hopefully that goal leads to something for the Minnesota Wild, but also for Danny Heatley. He can be the, the catalyst for the Wild comeback here. Well, that's going to help Danny Heatley and the Minnesota Wild that much more. And now suddenly there's some life in the building. Crowd roaring, pleading for the tying goal. Ballard plays to the corner. Cook is there. Puck comes back out to center. Ballard retreating. And this will be icing against the Wild. 
Faceoff coming back in the Minnesota zone. Brodziak and Niederreiter assist on the Heatley goal. We'll see what the Wild do with this. How you react after a goal. Kennedy with a wraparound try. Backstrom with a save. Rebound picked up by Hansel. Verbata slides it down low for Kennedy. Hansel with a shot. Skate saved by Backstrom. And the rebound whacked up against the glass. Cook starts back for the Wild ahead to Kanapka. Kanapka dumps it in from just across the red line. The Wild make a change. Inside nine minutes left. And the Wild suddenly within striking distance. The game that saw them take a while to get their offense on track. Suddenly creating some offensive chances. Halper. Try to play to the corner. Rodin. Plugging away for Minnesota. Boyle able to poke it past White. Koivu picks it up, dumps it into the Phoenix zone. Stone back after it. Around to Ekman Larson. Out of the head to Chip Chura. And Chip Chura carries to center. Sidesteps Commonville's check and plays it into the Minnesota zone. Scandella back to pick it up for the wild. Scandella drives it in. Clinkhammer. Takes a hit from Kanapka. Bodker brings it back in. Pad save. Backstrom on a tricky shot by Bodker. Phoenix leading, but only by one. Well, Danny Heatley already in this hockey game has exceeded all but four other ice time totals this season, which means he's seeing some ice time, and he's seeing it on the top line and on the second or third line as well. So Heatley's been all over the place, but he's also had some good scoring opportunities, and finally... He gets rewarded by driving to the net and picking a rebound and off the goaltender. And Danny Heatley has brought this team to within one. He just had a season high in minutes played in Winnipeg on Saturday when he played 19 and a half minutes. And now has three goals in the last five games for Minnesota. Faceoff coming in the neutral zone. We talked about the need for somebody to step up and fill the void left by Zach Parisi, not realizing that that void would be doubled when Mikhail Granlin went out a half a minute into his night. And it's not always one guy that can fill that role. Sometimes it takes a couple. Usually it takes a couple to fill the shoes of Zach Parisi. But here's where you got to win by committee in the games like this. Stone back in his own zone. Yandel fires it across for Moss. Moss tried to play it in. Has to go back to Stone. Seven minutes left. Third period here in St. Paul. Coyotes have lost four out of their last five. Wild have won their last six at home. Coyvu to Pominville. Taps it back for Coyle. Royals entry hit Pominville and Karen's back out to center ice. Ballard across to Suter. And now Brodziak, who just assisted on the Heatley goal. Just his second point in the last 10 games. Suter ahead too far for Brodziak. Alpern went down. Suter looking for Heatley. Heatley tries to work to the middle. Stone turns it back the other way. Alpern plays it into the Minnesota zone. Brodine is back. Withstands the hit by Clinkhammer. Hits the puck ahead to Danny Heatley. Who fires it in. And Heatley in on the forecheck for Minnesota. Scandella trying to hold the zone. Verbata. Can't get it past him at the line, but Halpern gains the putt, and now Verbata brings it in. Verbata has it broken up. Nice job by Brodine and Scandella getting back defensively for Minnesota. 
Beatley flips it in from center, and the Wild will change. Yandel for Phoenix. Watch by Kanapka. His pass off the mark. They wave off icing. Stoner has to play it for Minnesota. And now Matt Cook races back the other way. Fontaine joins him on the wing, and Cook slides it behind Kanapka, whose long pass is kicked out by Grice. Grice has been very generous with rebounds in this game. Stoner to Fontaine. Back at center, just out of the reach of Kanapka, who drives it in. Wild to make another change. Schlemko starts out for the Coyotes. Pass at center, tipped by Pominville. Played in by Bodker. Charlie Coyle. Got it out to neutralize, who was behind Koivu. Coyle, Koivu, and Pominville, the forward trio here for the Wild. Suter stumbled, manages to regain control of the puck, then it's played back by Koivu. Ballard's pass intercepted by Vermette. Vermette centered. Chip Churro was there, but Suter calmly gets a stick on that centering pass. Suter out of the head to Ballard, who tips it in. Ballard in on the forecheck. Rice plays it to the near side. Suter down the wall, trying to hold the zone for the Wild. Ekman Larson starts back the other way. Chip Chura puts on the brakes to avoid Koivu. Hominville knocks it back into the Phoenix zone. The wild change inside four minutes left. Danny Heatley's goal has Minnesota within one. But they desperately fight for the equalizer here late in the third. Here's Heatley at center ice. Drives it in and rings around to the far side. Niederreiter's there. Ekman Larson comes away with the puck and plays it out to center ice. Scandella back for the wild. Niederreiter avoids a man, got it to Brodine. Brodine plays it into the Phoenix zone. Murphy. Got it ahead to Hansel. Hansel flips it into his own bench and will get a faceoff. Welcome back to XL Energy Center. I'm Jamie Hirsch inviting you to stick around for Wild Live presented by Century Link. We'll talk about the Coyotes showing off their snipers tonight. Also, Danny Heatley lighting the lamp. We'll get Mike Yo's thoughts on it all. And then stick around because we have a special on-ice instructional, our Dairy Queen instructional with Ben Clymer and Wes Balls talking about the fundamentals of shooting angles. So stay with us for Wild Live, Anthony. We look forward to that. 3.08 left here. And the Wild trying to find a way to tie it. They've been looking up most of the night at the Coyotes. Who scored the game's first goal just over eight minutes in. Centering pass intercepted by Chip Chura. Icing. And a faceoff back in the Phoenix zone. Our Timberland Pro hard hit highlights. Matt Cook was physical all night long. Kick Schlemko out. But it's been a physical hockey game. Niederreiter taking a hit from her mat. Chip Tura almost goes into the wild bench, courtesy of Keith Ballard, who's back after missing a whole bunch of games. And good to see him physical and feeling confident. Hammondville back to pick it up. Keith Ballard starts out for the Wild. Two and a half to go as Ballard got it ahead to Coyle. Ackman Larson around to the far side. Coyle who drops to the point. Coyle fires, saved by Grice. Rebound picked up by Pominville. Coyle who fakes the shot. Feeds Ballard. Ballard fires, saved by Grice. Rebound is punched just wide. Coyle lost his helmet on the play. But another second opportunity for Minnesota. The helmetless Charlie Coyle brings it in. Coyle double teamed in the corner. Hansel comes away with the puck. Scandella down low for Minnesota. Tried to center. Lines up behind the net. Suter gloves and drops. 
at the Phoenix line and now Coyle recovers the puck at center ice played it to the Phoenix line heads to the bench but has to come back out with Hansel on the attack Coyle still protecting the puck for Minnesota 90 seconds left lost it in the neutral zone Clint Hammer tips it out to neutral ice Scandella ahead to Brodziak Brodziak has it knocked off of his stick by Morris Backstrom has made no move to the bench yet with 70 seconds left. Scandella out of the head to Cook. Cook into the Phoenix zone, lost the puck. Moss back the other way for the Coyotes as we enter the final minute. Throws it toward the goal. Spurgeon knocks it ahead off the wall. Matt Cook races back. Backstrom heads to the bench. Cook plays to the corner. Wild wouldn't mind a whistle here. Cook centers, and we're going to get a penalty behind the play on Kyle Brodziak. He delivered a hit at Halpern behind the Phoenix net. And with 44 seconds left, the Wild will go a man short. This is 21 to the six. Cook was back there separating the puck. We'll see what happens right here. It's interference. Yeah, Brodziak steamrolls. One of the Coyotes behind the net did not have the puck. Coyle had an opportunity to pitchfork one in, and he just couldn't get to it. That was after getting another shot right before that. Loses his helmet on that play. But Halpern gets just bulldozed by Brodziak, who, in effect, picks him. And so the Wild, if they, if they get Backstrom out, will be even. The Wild have taken their timeout. The faceoff will come back into the Minnesota zone. Remember, they do have the ability to ice the puck because they are a man short. So Mike Yo will talk a little strategy here, and we'll see if they can use that to their advantage. Well, obviously winning the draw is crucial here. The Wild 60% in the faceoff circle this game. Win the draw. And even if you throw the puck down, as you said, it's not icing. They get ahead of steam down there. Backstrom comes off, and you get that equalizer attacker, I guess, if you want to call him that. But winning the draw is crucial here. Not enough time to chase the puck around. Who's on the draw for Minnesota against Vermette? And we're going to drop the puck again. Don't know if they'll put any time back on. They won't. Coyote's able to hold the zone. Morris with a long shot. Backstrom with a save. Rebound corralled finally by Minnesota. Backstrom heads for the bench. Charlie Coyle drops to Koivu. And Koivu bobbled the pass just inside the line. Hansel to Verbata with the empty net. And the Coyotes seal it with an empty net power play goal to make it 3-1. I would have liked to see what Koivu did with that if he got control of it. It was a good line rush with Backstrom coming off. But not to be. Urbana with his second goal of the hockey game. And the wild win streak on home ice will come to an end. Two games in a row where the wild have given up an empty netter. Wild will now focus on Colorado back-to-back -back games against the division rival Avalanche. Bryce with a save on a Kanapka shot here in the closing seconds. And a night that just seemed to take the Wild too long to get going. Yeah, it was just and a Phoenix beats him 3-1. Tough momentum night here for the Wild. Could not get a lot of energy in their legs. Did not get enough offensive chances. 
And for the second time this year, the Wild have dropped two regulation games in a row. Our temp star, star of the game. And I thought there were some good signs in this game. It's Nito Niederreiter, and he was one of them. You know, four shots, was plenty physical, got an assist in this hockey game. Good game by Danny Heatley as well, but Niederreiter's our temp star, star of the game. Jamie, the Wild see their win streak on home ice come to an end here tonight. And what what a run it has been. Coyotes walk away 3-1 with a victory, and we'll break it down next with Wild Live, presented by Century Link. We saw some snipers for Phoenix tonight, but Danny Heatley also lit the lamp. Stay with us. Wild Live is next.